how good is glowing this time the card i will be taking a look at is definitely not a fringe card that is just sitting in the back of your bin there because this is one of the heroes that virtually every player had to touch at least once or twice because he's one of the free starter heroes that come in the main starter deck in the core set that is the leadership deck this is the adjusted deck for new players uh, as the rules say so uh, every player had played him but it doesn't mean that everyone really understands everything about him so how good is he let's find out so what does he do he's nine threat leadership hero he has dwarf and noble traits two willpower to attack one defense for hit points and his ability basically says that every time he uh, suffers damage he gets one resource for every damage he just suffered Last episode I abandoned the old formula of going through the card themes a bit because it seemed appropriate for me because I was doing such a simplistic effect that looking for themes there was just uh, kinda funny for me. But this time I will be back at it so we're start starting off with the card themes and the first one being the resource generation. Uh, of course he's a leadership hero because that's what most of the resource generating characters are. Well actually every sphere has some resource generating heroes but leadership is a staple and ha they have more. He's actually one of the only few effects in the game that can uh, have the potential to generate more than one resource around. While steward is the obvious second thing that comes to mind. And then the second theme is that he sees damage as a good thing and he transforms the damage kind of into benefits and I have a small theory about uh, this whole deal that uh, in Corset both Gimli and Gloin reap benefits from damage and then in uh, Kazad Doom we got Veteran of Nandohirion. I feel like the original designers wanted to lead dwarves into being kind of a tribe that gets benefits from damage but then it got kind of turned on its head we got uh, swarms we got uh, mining and the concept of a tribe that benefits from damage only came back way later uh, when we got ants but uh, dwarves could have been this thing but they aren't so uh, we have those two oddballs that are gimli and glowing that wants to be damaged and all the other dwarves see no reason to be damaged. Of course, when it comes to dwarves, he, he is a dwarf, obviously, he benefits from dying, he benefits from hardy leadership, all the other cards, not going to get into it, but if you know the game, you know that the dwarves are pretty much one of the best traits in the game. They have so much synergies that you can just build decks based on dwarves and be pretty much sure that you've got a uh, right deck in your hands. So, uh, his capabilities to generate that cash money are really ridiculous when you compare him to all the other resource accelerators as they mostly give you one additional resource around and going from one to potentially four five six eight well i don't need to tell you what this is so to use him well he presents a single challenge to be overcome and it, this challenge is it how are you going to be taking hits of course you can opt to just take a limited amount of hits and treating him like uh, some kind of a burst one-time generation like the netters but this is just locking his potential and i'm not going to talk about this case you can use him just once get three resources maybe two and forget about him but i don't believe this is the intended use so there are two available ways to keep him going we can keep adding more hit points and we can just keep healing him and you probably need both as most enemies these days can dish more done for damage so repeatable healing is really important as there are only so many cards you can play that will give you extra hit points. So let's talk about how to heal him. Of course, uh, you have a vast array of options, but you're pretty much locked into playing Lore because Lore has the most healing in the game. And the only other option that I feel like could pull some weight at outside of Lore is Dunedain Remedy. However, you will probably want to play Lore anyway because his best friend Elrond is there. While Elrond is in play, it will be way easier to get uh, out of combat with net, net profit as all the singular healing effects are essentially multiplied and it's without getting to the real secret of this relationship. And the secret is that they can generate infinite loops that are based around the interaction of Gloin getting resource for damage and Elrond boosting healing. Let's get into that. So there are two loops that are there. There's the original, the OG loop. And uh, this loop has been with us since Shadow and Flames. So let me walk you through it. So first you need to give Gloin a lore resource icon. 
and we can do it via a song or Narvi's belt, it's your call, doesn't matter how he gets there. And then you need Warden of Healing on your board as well. And Warden of Healing reads action, exhaust Warden of Healing to heal one damage on up to two different characters, then you may pay two lore to read the Warden of Healing. Now we take some damage on Gloin. Let's say you just took two damage, then you use Warden of Healing. He would remove one point of damage from Gloin, but then Elrond heals one additional damage and you get back to zero damage. And then you can pay two resources from Gloin that you just got for taking damage to ready Warden of Healing, so he's ready to heal again. And now Gloin can repeat this process and take any amount of two damage hits. If you can get his HP any higher, because his ability scales and gives you money equal to damage, you will always be able to clear out even amounts of damage with Warden. So basically you can take all the attacks in the game undefended until shadow effects wreck you. But that's pretty good anyway and you can prepare for the shadows. But recently Sistan from ringsdb.com has shared a new glowing loop. A one that's arguably stronger than the original one. It uses a new card that is coming out in the Land of Sorrow. And this could be months from now because uh, Fantasy Flight Games is not shipping expansions right now. But the loop will be there so I will walk you through it. So this new card is called Song of Healing, it says attach to a hero, limit once per hero and action discard one card from your hand to heal one damage from the attached hero. So for this loop you will need spirit resource, the uh, spirit icon I mean, on glowing rather than lore icon. And Song of Healing allows you to discard a card to heal two damage from glowing when you combine it with Elrond and then if you use Elven Light in this loop you can first receive two damage, you receive two resources you discard Elven Light to heal 2 damage, then when Elven Light is on your discard pile, you can pay 1 from Gloin to trigger Elven Light and get its it back and you also get a new card back. So from the 2 points of damage you took, you're back to 0 damage and you got a resource and you got a card. And it's incredible and much like Warden, it's infinite, so no matter how much damage you take, you can repeat this as many times as you want. And this one uh, seems to have the edge over the first loop as it draws you cards as well, but in Warden deck you can also heal other players and you can uh, clear other character damage for free. So all the loop also has some pluses over this one, I guess. And both loops are insane. They both really allow you to engage stupid amounts of enemies on the battlefield and you can just watch them bounce back. And if you supply Gloin with additional free healing on, or healing that does not cost resources other than the initial payment, like self-preservation, you will get ahead with money as well. So you will make him a tank and a resource generator. Not, I'm not really sure if the designers of the card back in the core set knew what they really are creating, but if they did, uh, they they sure did their homework making their monster uh, that is glowing. So he's there and now before we judge him I will just quickly as usual show you my own spin on the glowing deck. So the first thing uh, you may notice when looking at this deck is that we've got a lot of single cards. Uh, the thing is that with this deck you will end up probably drawing your whole deck so we'll be getting those cards anyway, and if the second copy uh, I deemed less useful than the first one, well then I left one copy uh, outside. Because, like, we have insanely high starting threat, so we need to act fast and we need to get Favor of the Valor out, but we have three copies of Favor of the Valor and we have two copies of the White Council, and we have Will of the West, so, and all of this we can draw pretty easily. And in this terry crafted scenario where we really need to compensate for the threat, uh, we can play uh, Favor of the Valor 10 times, so we should be good then. Except for the scenarios that force us to rush. We have the combo pieces that I mentioned in the first loop, and we also play Gandalf to see the top card of my deck. And it will allow us to play well equipped, which can put the top card of our deck as an attachment and attach it to the dwarf and uh, we can get a free seed level plate and if we can get this turn one sometimes it can really overwhelm the counter so that's the deck let's see how glowing fires in it and let's give the verdict then so the scenario i wanted to highlight today was into fangorn actually i got pretty lucky and i got the hero very early on 
I got the enemy that deals me free damage at the beginning of every resource phase and normally it would be a pretty bad card but with Glowin it actually turned into quite a benefit and I just kept him around for the whole game and he kept me giving free damage and free resources. I managed to uh, collect the whole combo with Elrond, uh, Song and Warden in the fourth round which isn't too early it could be done earlier but that's how it was this game and it was totally enough and from there on uh, Gloin got totally invincible uh, he was, I was able to heal everything and now uh, I will just sh show you a quick highlight of how it looked in the late game it was like 11th turn and now Gloin from like b a few resources in the at the beginning of a resource phase basically went to how much? Uh, 13 resources and in the late game it got even higher at some point I had around 30 resources and it's not some outlandish scenario it's actually in the realm of possibility for him so how good is glowing? it's obvious he is special he's the single most ridiculous resource generation tool in the game and the only thing that makes steward of gondor a bit more popular is the fact that it's an attachment that you can slot into pretty much any leadership deck without committing your strategy to it and there are many approaches you can take with glowing and hardly anything any tactics you can think uh, that makes use of him will turn out unsatisfying he's in the realm of broken but him being a build around hero holds him off from dominating the meta everywhere but it's not because of his power, it's more because people already have moved on to playing different decks. We've had Gloin since the beginning with us after all, and uh, he gets a 5. The single hero can gather more resources than 4 players during an entire session by himself, and that's saying something. Uh, he builds an archetype just by himself, which warrants this score. Thank you for staying until the end of the video, it ended up being a few minutes longer than I wanted it to be, but... Uh, it was really hard to cut it shorter. In a week I will be back with another video and maybe I will try uh, something new next time. Before I say goodbye I will ask you a question that I want you to answer in the comment section. What is your favorite underrated card? Uh, if And if you have a moment write down why it's your favorite one. And I'm very interested uh, in what are your hidden gems of strategy. And so that's it for now. Uh, stay safe and I will see you guys in the next one.